Thank you for checking out our YouTube channel and don't forget to subscribe and like. And please visit us at barrykibrick.com where you'll see all the ways that you can become a patron of our mission and help us continue to build a community of seekers who quest for knowledge, information, and most importantly, wisdom. What if we could dive below the surface and see deep within ourselves? Hello, I'm Barry Kibrick, and my guest, Robert Greene, knows that it will change our lives for the better. Robert is one of the great thinkers of our time. His seminal book, The 48 Laws of Power, is still read worldwide by millions. And now, with his latest masterpiece, The Laws of Human Nature, he takes us on a journey of empowerment. In this first episode with Robert, we explore the laws themselves and the awareness it will bring. Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible in part by Patreon. Patreon helps creators build and run membership businesses, from podcasters to writers, musicians, artists, and more, with tools that allow their fans to become patrons. More information is available at patreon.com. Mr. Robert Green, I don't know what to tell you, but uh, you have officially set the record today. You are the guest who has appeared most on Between the Lines with every one of your books. And all I can say is how grateful and honored I am to have you back, sir. Well, thank you for having me, Barry. I can't believe you still keep inviting me back. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but well, I'm honored anyway. Uh, well, you know you. what? It's hard not to invite the man who's written The 48 Laws of Power. And I thought, how do you top that book? Well, then you went on to the laws of the art of seduction. You went on to mastery. I'm not even going to rank them as where they stand. But your new book, The Laws of Human Nature, I actually joked with you on the phone the other day, and I said, where do you go from here? This is a gem, and it must be in everyone's household right next to those 48 laws of power. Well, thanks, Barry. I mean, um, I've been writing books um, on strategy and power and kind of helping people navigate a difficult social environment for 22 years now. And in this new book, I poured all of my experience, everything I've learned, all of my research, all of my consulting work into this book. So it is kind of my magnum opus, if I may say so. Not only at least at least my ambition was for that. It's very funny. I actually used those words in one of the introductions oh, because really? it really is of that, of that power and caliber. And so let's really uh, dive into this. As, sure. uh, as I introduced the show, um, we're going to be doing two episodes. This yes. book is dense and filled with s chock full of goodness that we're going to do two episodes. And on this episode, we're going to focus in on the laws themselves and then on our second episode, how we apply them okay. to our lives. And we'll hit a little bit of both in each one. You can't help it because that's what your book does as well. Besides teaching us the laws of nature, you give us historical perspectives. And even at the end of each chapter, you kind of, not kind of, that's such a passive word. You give us a way to utilize this knowledge. Uh huh. Well, each, the laws are sort of, I'm, I'm focusing on elements in our nature, how we evolved as human beings, that can be sort of destructive if we don't control them. Sort of how emotions govern our behavior, how we're constantly prone to comparing ourselves to other people, which makes us envious, how we have a dark side, how we have aggressive impulses. But at the end of each chapter, I want to make it clear that by acknowledging these forces within us, these things that intend to control us, we can begin to control them and we can begin to become what I say we become human. We have an, a lower animal nature in us that, that can make us get addicted to, to, to drugs or whatever that makes us conform to what other people are thinking, that makes us angry, violent and aggressive. And we need to evolve and become aware and actually become human. 
That is our potential. You know, when you say that, you use these words that seem to ring so true. It's because it's as if we harbor a stranger within us. If yeah. we're not aware of how human we really are, we think that stranger is sort of evil, and we have to become not only away from that term, but we have to become comfortable with that stranger in us. And even if that stranger in us sometimes evokes all these negative emotions, yeah. when you become more aware, it's easier to relieve yourself of them. Yeah, I mean, I think we've all had the experience where at some point we've gotten angry and we vented our anger in a way that kind of surprises us later on, a week later, we go, what, what happened there? Who was I? And then we say, well, it really wasn't me. That, that isn't who I am. And that's what I'm trying to tell you in this book. Those are important moments that you must focus on because in those moments, you are actually becoming aware of this stranger within you, this other person. You don't really know necessarily why you are angry in that moment. You think you're angry because this person said a bad word or you feel frustrated that people aren't listening to you or whatever. But actually your anger can come from something much deeper than that. It can come from issues that go back to your childhood, to perhaps something your spouse said the day before that's still sitting inside of you. And someone who crosses your path triggers you and you get emotional and angry. And when we get really emotional, like we all do, it's almost as if there's somebody else operating within us, something that we can't control, and it can be frightening. And not only is it frightening, but what, what I found so soothing was that this book tells you how to not only deal with others when you get in this state, but it tells you how your own emotions are affected by your nature, so right. to speak. And you have to therefore give yourself some slack. I don't know how else to put it, but you need to. What this book helps you do is realize, I'm a human. Yeah. I know that sounds funny. I'm a human, and if I'm depressed, if I'm anxious, I can use all of those things right. to my advantage, not disadvantage. Right. Well, um, you know, we'll, we do have, we all recognize that, that people can be aggressive, that there are people who are narcissistic. We've all encountered narcissistic people around us. Um, Wait, I'm laughing because in the book, isn't there a part that says we are all well, narcissists, well, at least to some degree? Well, that's the point of the book. So we're always pointing fingers at others. She's narcissistic, he's envious, he's aggressive. She, uh, you know, is irrational. And we never, I say the most vital, the most important element of human nature is that we deny that we have human nature. We always want to think that it's the other person who's irrational. The other person is aggressive or narcissistic or grandiose. But I'm trying to tell you that we're all human. We're all cut from the same cloth. We all evolved from the same small group of people out of East Africa. And so we all are wired in the same way. And the tendency that makes one person a narcissist is within us as well. We are all to some ex extent very self-absorbed. And I want to take it away from the judgmental aspect that people have of saying, oh, you know, you're a narcissist or you're self-absorbed. We're all that way. And I want you to accept these parts of yourself. Instead of keep projecting onto other people that they're the ones who are bad, realize that you have that part of it, of it inside of you. Everything that you think other people have, you have those tendencies as well. And you need to accept it. And by accepting it, you become a better human being. By realizing, for instance, that you are capable of, very much capable of feeling envy towards other people who have success, you can now move past that. You can begin to deal with it. And I think we've all encountered people in life who we smell as being phony. They're hypocrites. They pretend to be saints and great people, but we know that deep down inside, they're riddled with all kinds of flaws, um, that they have a dark side. And then we know other people who are very authentic, who kind of are who they are. They don't try to hide it. They, they're comfortable with, with their human nature. They're at ease with it. And we're attracted to people like that. So I want you, 
the people out there to feel the same way. I want you to accept that you have all of these elements of human nature, and then you can move past this. Well, that's why, and I'm going to read your words exactly, you say, learn to question yourself. The first step towards becoming rational is to understand our fundamental irrationality, because isn't that what bogs us most down, is that what we're thinking is irrational because we are filled with feelings and emotions. And you say that's the first step in becoming rational is understanding your irrationality. Yes, the, 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 the fundamental aspect of being human, of being a human being, is not that we are these thinking creatures, these thinking animals that we imagine. We are actually very emotional creatures. Um, scientists have studied this. All animals feel emotions, such as fear, for example. We have a range of some 40 emotions, all very subtle, all nuanced. That's who we are. We feel continually feeling, welling from deep within, anxiety, frustration, um, love, admiration, all uh, an incredible gamut of emotions. And that's who we are. We feel something very strongly within, and then our minds go trying to find a way to justify those emotions. So emotions govern all, so many of our choices and what we do in life. And if you go around believing that you're not like that, oh, I don't buy products based on emotion or based on advertisements. Oh, I don't choose a spouse or a partner because of some irrational process. I'm very rational about my choices. Then you're in deep, deep denial and you're probably very much someone who is governed by emotions. But if you can be aware of it, if you can question yourself, if you can look at yourself with some distance and say, why am I angry? Why am I so in love with this particular idea? Why do I feel this way towards that person? Then you can begin to have some understanding and some distance and become rational. One of the things you say we need to do is to cut off the incessant interior monologue that goes on in our head that is so negative. Because when we do feel sometimes these emotions, the first thing we can't help is feel bad about. I know for a fact one of my own things is this wonderful spiral, I call it. I don't know why it's wonderful, because it's only spiraling down. But what happens is, is I become aware, then I'm angry at myself for becoming aware and not being able to change things. Then I'm angry that I didn't change the things I should have become aware of. And you tell us, stop that. You've got to stop that incessant kind of monologue. Not that you shouldn't be sort of having a good discussion with yourself, that's part of human nature, but stop that chatter of that, that brain that won't stop talking. Well, the main point I bring that up is um, one of the key elements that I, one of the key things that we have, a power that is in every single human being that is untapped, a power that will bring, bring you great things in life is what I call empathy. And empathy is the ability to get outside of yourself and to put yourself in the position of other people. So if I'm sitting here talking to Barry Kibrick, I can use my imagination, I can use this kind of uh, contagion of emotion, feeling how, fe how it feels to be Barry Kibrick, and I can almost begin to get inside of your world and think of what it's like to be you. We have that power, it's unbelievable power. We can take the perspective of other people. It's something that children show at a very early age, and it's what makes us human. And this power of empathy is something that dies in us as we get older and as we become self-absorbed. And we all we start doing during the day is listening to the same little interior monologue. We become self-absorbed. And I, I want to tell you something. It'll be shocking if you, in your next encounter with a friend or somebody in a social situation, you attempt to stop that interior monologue and focus on them and think, what is it like to be that person? What are they feeling? What is it like to have grown up in their circumstances? What is it like to have come from a broken home like they did, or to have not have a father in the house? And to get inside their world and cut off all of that self-absorption, it'll have a remarkable effect. The effect will be, you will be much more likable you'll be able to understand people and then you'll be able to influence them and persuade them to do things that you want or to stop negative behavior. 
it'll have a revolutionary effect on your relationships with everybody. So every part of this book, I'm constantly emphasizing the need to get out of yourself and put yourself into the shoes of other people. And the and one thing that you say we cannot escape is this character. Even yeah. a positive trait such as intelligence is worthless if the person also happens to be of weak or dubious character. Character really does count. Yes, and um, it's not something that we think of naturally. Um, we're sort of always impressed by the appearances people present to us. So if they're charming and pleasing and flatter us and they, they're witty or something, we judge them as an interesting person. But let me tell you, the most important thing that you're going to have in life are the people you choose to associate with. Your business partners, your employees, your spouse. The, these are choices that you make. And if you make one bad choice, if you choose one bad spouse, partner to live with, one bad business person, a really bad employee, they can ruin your life forever. They can create incredible emotional damage. And the problem that we have is that when we judge people who we're going to associate with, we're not looking deep inside. Character is, is, what, is the core of a person, something they can't control, something that comes from deep within. And it causes people to have patterns of behavior. And you want to find people who have a strong character to associate with as opposed to a weak character. And what a strong character is, is people who, who are adaptable, who are fluid, who can admit that they are wrong, who can learn from their experience, who can take criticism, who can work with other people. So one of the parts of this book is I want you to focus not on people's charming exterior, on their funny words, on their wit, on their charisma, and instead focus on that deep inner quality, that core, that character, because that's who they really are. Your character is creating what happens to you in life. There's the famous quote, of the ancient Greek philosopher Heraclitus, character is fate. So who you are deep within, the, this element that I discuss, and I tell you in the book where your character comes from, but that governs what happens to you in life, the patterns that continually recur in your life, the same mistakes and the same good things that happen come from you, come from within, come from your character. You know, in fact, not only you said you relate to it, but I relate to it to such an extent that I, I joke with people when I, see, when I hear someone say they don't make the same mistake twice, I can't stop laughing because I only make the same mistakes over and over and over again due to my character. Now, fortunately, I hope those mistakes are, you know, minimal, that I can g get a grip on it, that I can do it. But that's what is happening, isn't it? You are because that's who you are. So I know that, <laughs> kind of funny for what I do for a living, but I know I talk too much, okay? <laughs> and I should always be quiet at a certain time. Uh -huh. But, um, and, and I, I know lots of things, but I, it's, you know what it is? It's not so much the knowledge. It's taking that knowledge and imbibing it within your soul. That's right. another word that is, is, is very interestingly used in yeah. this book, but you must, you must bring it in your soul so that then you can A, feel comfortable with it, right. and B, adjust it if you need to. Yeah, I mean, I, I, an example for me is every time I write a book and I start a new book, I'm gonna say, you know, that last book, I did too much research, I read too many books, I wasted too much time. This book is going to be shorter and I'm going to do it differently. And look what happens. <laughs> I make the same mistake every time. I read too many books, I do too much research. The book is 600 pages long, they're getting longer and longer. I can't break out of this pattern. Why? I don't know why. There's something neurotic. There's something where I'm trying too hard to please my readers or whatever, but I can't break out of it. So I'm, I write the books, but I'm subject to the same laws. Well, you know something though, but in this case, I'm so glad oh. you didn't break <laughs> out of it because although, in fact, it, it is, you can use this as a doorstop, it is, yeah. but let me tell you something. There's very little repetition. That's kind of interesting. Oh. There's very little. Now, there is some 
pedagogy that goes with anything. In other words, to, to send messages home, you do give us historical context, you give us right. things. And of course, so much of the laws of human nature are within us anyway, so we do circle back. But it is the type of work that had to be done to write this type of material because there is, we human beings are that complex. That's the one thing you really let us know in here. Yeah, I want you to, I want, the point of this book is to change how you look at other people and to change how you look at yourself. So when you look at other people, I want you to, you tend to simplify them. You tend to have categories. This person is nice, this person is unpleasant, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But people are never simple. People are incredibly complex. They are feeling in every single moment right now, you're feeling, Barry, three or four different emotions that are passing through you. They don't last more than a few seconds. You have all of this rich experience in you that is causing you to respond a certain way. You are much more complicated than I could ever know. And look at yourself and look at how complicated you are. You don't really know why you feel these certain ways. You could spend your whole life and you would never understand why you are attracted to certain people and not attracted to other people. You are complex and you don't know the people you're dealing with. You know, they're, they're mysteries to you. You, th you could live with someone for 40 years and you still don't know them. You still don't know the depths inside of them. And even yourself, you say to us, what is real and what is imagined are both experienced similarly in the brain. So as we don't know that much about the others, we don't, or our goal is to keep knowing more about ourselves because of that. What is real or imagined in our brain feels the same. That's right. You can have no knowledge of anything in the world unless you first know yourself. And that was Socrates' main uh, dictum. And he wanted to begin with the idea that I don't know anything about something. You have to admit your ignorance before you can begin to learn about something. So I want you to look at yourself and sort of wipe the slate clean and say, tell yourself, I really don't know who I am. I need to discover who I am. And I take you through this in this book through a process of how you can begin to explore and cut away layers and get at who you are at your core. Because I want you to begin with this premise that you don't really know who you are. And I want to emphasize to my viewers that during this process, the one thing you can't do is turn it against yourself because that's also going to be a tendency as you explore yourself and you have to be careful not to blame yourself. Maybe take responsibility for how you can improve yourself, but do not and that's what you emphasize here, Ove, do not blame yourself for being a human. Right. I mean, um, you know, you might think that this is a heavy thing going on where you have to confront things that you don't want to confront. But I want you to look at it as something incredibly liberating, right? So if I'm saying that we all have aggressive impulses, and I explain in the book where our human aggression comes from, we are not necessarily violent. We have to make a distinction between violence and aggression, but we have aggressive impulses. And I want you to, to stop blaming yourself, to stop feeling guilty for these impulses and instead integrate them into your character, integrate them into something productive in your life and use that aggression for something positive. So for instance, if you want to fight for a cause, if you believe there's injustice in this world, and believe me, there's a lot of injustice in this world, you're going to need to become aggressive. It's aggressive energy that Martin Luther King used in order to fight injustice in this world. It's the same anger that fueled Mahatma Gandhi, that fueled Nelson Mandela. So your aggressive impulses can be channeled into something very productive and positive, but you first must integrate that into your entire personality and not try and deny and repress it. You integrated it into our personalities by this book, Robert, oh. and I am so grateful oh, that you thank joined you, us today. Thank you, It Barry. is my pleasure. You're going to stick around for another episode plus yeah. our little segment, but I want to also thank my viewers for joining us today. And don't forget our new feature on barrykibrick.com. It's called Afterwards. 
It's a chance for my guest and I to chat a few extra minutes about an issue we didn't cover during this episode. In this one with Robert, I will be talking about enlightening strategies to develop a flexible mind. So check it out. But before you do, I would like to leave you with these few more words from the laws of human nature. Being able to understand more clearly that stranger within would help us to realize that it is not a stranger at all but very much a part of ourselves, and that we are far more mysterious, complex, and interesting than we had imagined. I'm Barry Kibrick. Between all the laws of human nature, the one you must clearly see is that you are one of a kind and that you play a very important role in this world. Thanks, Barry. My pleasure. Thank you. To become part of the Between the Lines family, go to barrykibrick.com. There you can join our book club, participate in Q&As, catch past episodes, listen to Barry's podcasts, read his blog, and experience exclusive online features, all at barrykibrick.com. Between the Lines with Barry Kibrick is made possible in part by Patreon. Patreon helps creators build and run membership businesses, from podcasters to writers, musicians, artists, and more, with tools that allow their fans to become patrons. More information is available at patreon.com.